Okay, we're here today on realagriculture.com with Ross McKenzie. Uh, Ross, we're going to be talking about uh, winter wheat. Uh, so we're getting very close to we're getting close to the end of August. Uh, farmers are starting to think about planting uh, winter wheat. What are some of the things they need to be uh, thinking about, Ross? Well, really, when it comes to winter wheat, uh, maybe the first thing I'd even mention is I'm a big fan of winter wheat. I think it's a great crop. Uh, in an average year, usually winter wheat will have an advantage of about 20% higher yield over spring wheat in the same year. Uh, that's that's a, a real generalization, but uh, in some years, like 2009, we may not have that uh, yield advantage because of weather conditions. But in other years, we see it much higher than 20%. But 20% is is kind of a, a realistic uh, advantage. Uh, so what do we need to be thinking about? Number one, uh, what varieties should you be uh, looking at? What are the best varieties for your area? Seeding date, seeding rate, seeding depth, and fertility and weed control. Those are kind of the, the big things you really want to keep in mind. Okay, so in terms of uh, seeding date, okay, where should we be? Uh, in terms of seeding date in uh, southern Alberta, if we had to kind of pick a, a, a perfect time, it would be around September 10th to 12th. That's kind of the ideal window. Uh, but really, any time in the first two weeks of September is the best. And sometimes people think, well, what about seeding a little bit earlier? Well, if I was in central Alberta, then really we would want to seed a little bit earlier uh, for the simple reason that uh, we wanted to see seed winter wheat in that last week of, of uh, August or first week of September. Uh, but the reason why do we want to seed at that particular time? Well, we want to, to get that crop to germinate emerge, put up three leaves, and then once you have uh, three leaves established, then the crop can develop a crown, and you need that crown development before you go into winter. And usually, you, uh, by seeding it, for example, uh, the 10th to 12th uh, in southern Alberta, by seeding at that time, that you almost always will allow that, that plant enough time to germinate, emerge, and establish that crown, so then it's set up to uh, go through the winter and survive the winter. Okay. Um, people often also wonder, well, if I seed earlier, would I, that would not be better? We do have to be concerned about something we call the green bridge. If you're sitting into a field where there's a green, any green volunteer or green grass uh, uh, growing in the, the roadside ditches or headlands, there's, there is a mite called the, the wheat curl mite. It harbors a disease called uh, wheat streak mosaic. And uh, so if you're seated and you seen into a field and there's some uh, green volunteer that, where that mite could be uh, uh, living, as soon as that winter wheat uh, germinates and emerges, then that mite will move over into that uh, uh, winter wheat, uh, feed it, and the, wheat, the mite itself doesn't really cause any damage, but it's the, the transfer of that uh, wheat streak mosaic virus that can be uh, uh, absolutely deadly to a winter wheat crop. So making sure you seed into a, a very clean field with no green material in it is critically important. Uh, so in terms of uh, winter wheat, there is some options in terms of variety selection. Yep. Uh, what is kind of the, br the breakdown as, as uh, you see Well, it? probably the, the two better varieties to grow in southern Alberta, in my mind, are AC Bellatrix. And then a new, probably the newest variety of the program is uh, Radiant. And I do like Radiant because uh, it actually has wheat curl mite resistance. It, the leaves won't uh, curl like black. But they call it, the reason they call it a leaf curl mite, it can actually wrap itself up in a leaf. And the, the leaves of uh, Radiant won't actually wrap up, so it makes it very difficult for that uh, uh, curl mite to actually survive uh, in that particular crop. So it, is, it does have a significant uh, uh, resistance to uh, uh, the wheat curl mite. Uh, in central Alberta, if you're really looking for uh, um, excellent uh, winter hiding, a uh, variety to look at would be CDC Osprey. It comes out of the Saskatoon breeding program. It probably has the, the best winter hardiness of any of the, the winter wheats around. It is an acceptable variety to the Canadian Wheat Board. So in terms of uh, plant populations? Right. Usually I like to suggest that to, for farmers in southern Alberta to kind of target about uh, 25 plants per square foot. That's kind of the, the ideal uh, seeding rate. Uh, if you even want to shift up a little bit higher on dry land, you, you, you could a little bit higher. And then on, on irrigation, you might even want to be looking at 30 perhaps even 35 plants per square foot uh, for, for shooting for optimum yield. Uh, that would be sort of the target. Uh, 25 plants per square foot, if you're going to seed uh, Bellatrix reading, it would probably be somewhere in that range of 120 uh, uh, pounds of seed per acre. But I always suggest uh, when, this, when you get your seed, do the 1,000 kernel weight with the Alberta Agriculture website and, and then actually figure out what is the, the exact pounds per acre you want to seed because seed size can be a bit variable from year to year. Uh, so you always want to look at 1,000 kernel weight and establish uh, uh, your actual uh, uh, seeding rate in pounds per acre by doing that. So if, if you, you mentioned 1,000 kernel weight, okay, um, still a lot of people out there seeding by bushels. Yes. Um, so in, maybe not just necessarily specific to winter wheat, but just in general, 
why is seeding by 1,000 kernel weight so important? Well, the seed size will vary from, from year to year. And so you'd say, for example, uh, your seed source, uh, uh, for just by chance for winter wheat this year happens to be, uh, uh, the seed happens to be a bit smaller. Well, then you could actually reduce the, the number of pounds per acre you would actually seed, as long as that seed has good viability. But in another year, the, the seed might be just a little bit more plump. So the, the, um, the, uh, the seed, because it's a little plumper, you'd actually have to go to a slightly higher seeding rate in terms of pounds per acre to actually achieve that same plant population. And, and it can actually vary by uh, quite significantly from year to year. If you happen to have a, a drier year, your, your seed size is going to be less plump. If you have a wetter year, your seed plant size is going to be more plump. And so if you have to have, have if you have good plump seed, that's great, but you actually have to bump up your seeding rate to get the same number of seeds per square foot. Uh, winter wheat uh, fertility management. Well, uh, nitrogen is uh, very important. Uh, sometimes, uh, uh, many years ago, people would, uh, if they seeded their, their winter wheat, they wouldn't put any nitrogen down. Because uh, there was an old wife's tale that uh, uh, if you put on nitrogen, that would might tend to induce a winter kill. And that's just simply not true. Now, if you do put on nitrogen and no phosphorus, you have that imbalance, and that could uh, lead to a greater potential for winter kill. But most most uh, fields in Southern Alberta are going to need nitrogen and phosphorus, so I'd suggest uh, probably putting on about 20 pounds of uh, phosphate seed placed. And then for nitrogen, uh, really you have your choice, you, if, especially if it's uh, a field that uh, was in, uh, say, uh, a cereal or an oil seed this year and it was a good yield, your nitrogen levels are going to be low, so you do want to put on some nitrogen this fall. You, know, if you can safely put on 30 pounds of uh, nitrogen in the urea form seed placed with winter wheat, so that might be the option you might want to go with. Uh, just uh, put that uh, 30 pounds of nitrogen, 20 pounds of phosphate uh, with the seed at the time you seed. And then next spring, if moisture conditions are good, go ahead and uh, top dress with another uh, somewhere uh, between uh, 30 and 60 pounds of nitrogen, depending on, on your soil nitrogen levels and the moisture conditions. The other option would be then to, at the time of seeding, you could put all of your nitrogen down. But if you're using urea, you only want to put 30 pounds with the seed. Any additional nitrogen you want to put on would then have to be side banded or mid roll applied away from the seed so it doesn't have a toxic effect on the seedling. The, the last choice is if you want to use something like ESN, environmentally smart nitrogen. It's very safe. Our work uh, uh, across uh, Southern Alberta is quite clearly shown. We can go up to 80 to 90 pounds of nitrogen in using, using ESN uh, quite safely. Uh, so that's certainly an option to use ESN in the fall. But the reality is it's uh, 10 to 12 cents a pound more expensive. So then a farmer has to decide if it's worth hmm. it for him or not. Is there an ideal crop uh, in terms of rotation? Is there an um, ideal I, crop to follow? To be honest, one crop I do like to follow is either uh, mustard or uh, or canola. If you're seeding into an oil seed, it's very easy to control any volunteers. You want to try and have a say, standing stubble to uh, trap uh, snow to get that insulating effect or an insulating benefit of the snow over the winter to help that winter survival. Uh, so certainly uh, feed into uh, an oil seed uh, uh, stubble is, is one option. Another option would be uh, to seed into uh, uh, a pea stubble and oftentimes peas will come off uh, in quite a good time. So you can seed into peas, uh, you get the nitrogen benefits the following year from the peas and also that, that's great. The downside, especially if you move north when you want to have standing stubble to trap snow, you're not going to get that advantage with peas. So that's the downside. And how about uh, seeding depth of winter wheat? Well, uh, seeding depth is also very important for winter wheat. Um, most people look at winter wheat and spring wheat and think, well, it's going to behave about the same. And, and in, many, in many ways it does. However, uh, when winter wheat uh, germinates, that little sprout that comes off the, uh, the winter wheat seed uh, is actually called the coleoptile. And that coleoptile on winter wheat is much shorter than on spring wheat. So you can see the spring wheat at 2 inches or even 3 inches and it will still emerge. It might take a little bit of time, but it will emerge where winter wheat, uh, because that coleoptile is quite short, you really only want to see winter wheat a maximum of an inch deep. So I almost look at winter wheat and see it, it kind of like we would see canola, but a half an inch to an inch deep. And uh, uh, then that usually will ensure a very good emergence. Now sometimes moisture conditions are a concern. This year with our moisture, it shouldn't be. But if you see winter wheat at two inches or two and a half inches, um, the percent emergence is really going to start to drop off the deeper you see winter wheat. So an important uh, factor is not to see winter wheat. Thanks a lot, Ross.